unto the uh, the word of God uh, last time on breaking limits and uh, we started dealing something that is very powerful about you know uh, one way of breaking limits uh, is prayer of course I talked about a number of other things but I'm glad that prayer is coming out for most of you and I can see that uh, uh, you are able you are able to make sure that uh, you are not uh, you, you, you are keeping that you are keeping that uh, word on prayer and you are taking uh, you know prayer deep and uh, things are going to happen in your life uh, Matthew 26 we were on this chapter Matthew 26 Uh, one thing that changed my prayer life is taking time to study Jesus' prayer life. I found out from the scriptures that Jesus was highly disciplined in his prayer life. He becomes our model of prayer. He becomes our model as far as prayer life is concerned. There is no man ever on the face of the earth who prayed like Jesus. I repeat, there is no man upon the face of the earth ever prayed like Jesus. And that's what challenged my own prayer life. And one day it occurred to me by revelation. Jesus who is a son of God full of life, full of power, full of wisdom, full of everything he needs. He's not in our dimension because you remember that Jesus, when he came on earth, he was in two personalities. He was Jesus, God, the son of God. And he was Jesus, the man. So he shares the part of us as a man, 100%. He operated as a man in those 33 years. He was a man. He had the capabilities, but he also had limitations. In the part of a man, he also faced exactly limitations like you. And of course, you know very well the Bible says he was also tempted as we are. Amen? In the book of Hebrews. So he faced, Timothy, can you give me that scripture? He was tempted in the same manner as us. So as part of him as a man, he had similar weaknesses like us. He was hungry. Many times he suffered hunger like us. He got tired like us because as a man, he had the frailties or weaknesses of a human life. He faced the literal weak human weaknesses as a man. Just like you and me. That's why sometimes he grew hungry and got tired. That's why the Bible says he became thirsty. He, he, he drank when he was fasting even in 40 days. And that's why he slept off. The, the other disciples were in the boat. And what surprised me, they could not sleep Jesus just took off a sleep. He just fell asleep. Sleep overcame him also. You get in the boat. And, and when the storm came, he was in a deep sleep. And while others were just say, all panicking and awake, and they couldn't sleep because when you lose peace in your heart, sleep goes. You see, but Jesus, because he was in control of circumstances, so he, he was peaceful amidst the storm. Even you, when you become peaceful amid the storm, you continue to win victories. But the moment your peace goes, you start to lose the battle. But anyway, he, 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 he suffered the same temptations like us. That's what I wanted. Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4. verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. I love that. Did you hear that? He was in all what? In all manner of life he was tempted like you and me. Okay. In all points. But in all points tempted as we are. 
just like us. He was in all time tempted. So he suffered in the flesh temptations like us. But then we also see that he never yielded to any temptation, not even one day. So now that's what makes him different, what makes him not to yield. As we get tempted like Jesus was tempted in all points. But for us, when temptations come, many times we get overcome. But Jesus did not yield. He was not overcome by any of the temptation for the 33 years of his life on earth. So what makes Jesus win? And those are the things we come and study. And now one of the things that we find making Jesus breaking such a limit that he can't even fall into a temptation which makes you to fall in or get overcome by a similar temptation which Jesus overcame when he was on earth. One of the things that we learn from him is his stronger prayer life. And of course... He, how do I know about that? I watched through the scriptures how he was living a life of prayer. But even he reached the place and he unveiled a secret to the disciples. If you want to win, he said in his word, he says, pray without ceasing lest you fall into. Very clear. So don't cease to pray. If you cease to pray, you will fall now, when Jesus, because he understands the truth that when you cease to pray, you will be overcome by temptations. So Jesus does not cease to pray. He, prays, uh, he prayed unceasingly. We teach about unceasing prayer. So he was all the time living a life of prayer. Just because he knows when you don't pray, you're going to fall into the temptation. So Jesus continued to pray to build a stronger and broken prayer life because if you break your discipline of prayer, definitely you will become a victim of temptation. You will fall into temptations. You may fall into temptation of sexual scandal. You may fall into temptation. You have seen great, powerful, anointed men of God and you hear things spoken about them. Say, oh my God, how did that happen? You get a good girl, a great worshiper, a great musician and you hear the story and say, what exactly happened? So these guys operate in greater talents and gifts, but they neglect their prayer lives. And before longer, before they get to know, they have become a victim of temptation. That's why yesterday I met this young man and he stopped me. I was around going up Makango there and he came and greeted me. And he says, oh, I want to bring some clothes to take to the battle again. I brought the other ones. Then he started telling me, oh, I... The other time I gave clothing, I met somebody, he gave me a, a very good t-shirt uh, of uh, 25,000 uh, when I didn't even ask, when I didn't even trouble. I said, of course, when you, uh, what you saw is what you reap. I started telling the young man. Then I started to encourage him. I said, the other day in the church, I gave a prophetic word upon you. But I said, young man, there is a bigger future ahead of you. I advise you one thing. Make sure you sit down to be well taught and discipled. And mentored. Because the danger with the younger generation today, that's where it comes from. I have watched over years, I can tell you, what breaks the younger men generation, a generation of viewers, is being untaught, being undiscipled, being unstable. And the devil sees that this person is fully anointed, powerfully carrying greater grace, has a higher calling on their lives, they may become great people, so he brings them to a place of, of, of becoming unruly, unloyal, insubordinate, lack of submission. They never get taught. They have a fire which is just shallow. Their roots are not deep. They are not rooted. They are not grounded because what roots your faith, what helps you to be grounded and rooted and established in faith is not your own endeavors. But how can you be taught? Now, there is a, a young man who started to know deep word and go deep and study a lot and pray a lot, but he never sits under instruction. And he has become a victim of his own era in life where he, he could not sustain character properly. He's fully anointed and with deep revelations, more than all of you. But his character... It comes up when the relatives called me, says, you preside over this man, 
He says you are his spiritual father but we are failing to understand him. Oh, I can't believe this. Can you be the one to talk on our behalf for him? Maybe for you, he will listen to you. Then I came to discover some of the issues which have been affecting him. He never sits down to be taught. In spite of the anointing and greater faith and revelations, he started to sleep with a girl before they get married. And you know in such a circumstances what is going to happen? You're going to produce before your actual time. And then you are exposed. So you cannot tell people that you never had fornication before you, are, you were wedded in church. Then the guilty, unless you come to a day and confess that sin, it will get you from there to here. You lose confidence and you lose power with God and the spirit of shame and guilty begin to suck your spiritual faith and confidence. Another lady, Beth may remember, she came to our church, was still the other side. They went with Mama to the training in Nairobi and uh, with Mama and the team. And when she came from Nairobi, she stepped in Kampala. Whatever happened, she came back one week. She says, when I came from Nairobi, I reached in Kampala. I met a man. I'm going to get married. Too quick, too fast. Okay, can we have an appointment? I want to talk to you. You are on a high speed to get married. Can we first talk to you, slow down. No, 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 no. I was praying. The Holy Ghost has revealed to me. I saw him in the dream. I got a vision. I got this until I could not handle. Mm. Then I began to realize Beth can remember. Then I said this girl I think she has never sat under any spiritual discipleship, never sat under any spiritual father. So very soon they called me from Kampala. The guy was at KPC, Watoto, want to marry. This girl came to Kavali's in your church. We are coming. We want to go for introduction. What do you say about her? I said, well, she's a good girl, but I think she never sat under any church leadership to be trained, to be mentored. So what are you saying? Give her time. Let's help her until we come to a place. You maybe give it six months. Let's watch over her. This is my personal opinion. I think she never sat down to be taught. I'm talking to the man. Do you know, as she raged, I don't know whether she was the one putting pressure on the man, whatever happened. I talked to the pastor where the man was going. I said, these people are in a relationship, they want to get married. I advise that first give the young man time because I want to study this girl. To me, this girl, I don't know her very well. She just joined our church in less than three months. She's very fiery. She has some prophetic anointing, but I feel like some deception is within the spirit of prophecy. She has the fire, but she lacks the knowledge and being grounded in the word. I advised the brother to first hold on. And even her, I told her she can first wait. We give this relationship six months. And possibly, if there is anything we'll have seen or we can help her. Now what surprised me, the girl didn't listen to me, the boy didn't listen to me. This real story of life, this real life story. Now for me, whenever you tell me God has said and you don't listen to my wisdom, I'll pull off immediately. Whether you are one of these people. If Timothy, I say hold on and you go ahead, me I will pull out. 
Because when you put God, me, I'm, no, I'm just a loser as kids. I don't want to fight God. But a person who is well taught, he knows the place of their spiritual authority in their lives. They will recognize the place of their man of God. They will recognize the place of their prophet, the place of their teacher, the place of their father. A wise one will know that. An ungodly one, an unruly one will not honor that place. So they went on. They went away. They came here in Kavale. She was born this uh, here in Iruchiga. I went there even for the giveaway. But my spirit was not free. We went. We participated in the giveaway. I can only tell you this truth. They got married. They did not last a, a month. And the marriage ended badly. She was crying to me, Papa, help me to, to divorce this man. I said, don't ever come to me. No, it was the husband who said, can you help us to divorce? I said, you remember what I told you? I told you give that relationship time. Give me six months you didn't listen to me. You even went and wedded at Full Gospel Church in Kampala where they don't know either the girl or the boy. When they asked me a letter of introduction at Full Gospel Church Kampala, I wrote and I told them. The girl joined our church not too long. I would advise they give time to this relationship. But even the Full Gospel Church didn't take listen. They conducted the wedding. So I told them, go back to Full Gospel Church in Kampala. Tell the people who wedded you to conduct a divorce. Me, I'm called to join people together in a holy marriage covenant, not to break covenants. I don't want to hear any man. Full stop. You can't tell how miserably, disgracefully, that kind of a marriage ended them in the greatest agony. The boy's life, I've never heard again from him. He was a great young man. He got disorganized. I don't know whether he ever got married again or whatever happened. But that was the most torturing moment of his life. You know, some misfortunes can fall upon you. Some people can leave spells on your life that start disorganizing, that start spoiling your image. Everybody start looking at you as the worst man when you are not a trouble cause. Or a worst girl when actually you are not a trouble cause. The marriage didn't work. Those guys ended in the most disrespectful relationship. Now, the shame they went on. This is a true story. This life story. Now, after the marriage was broken, the girl cut off her phone, never connect to the father, never connect to any person in life. She disappeared from Kampala. Until the father thought the daughter died. I was preaching at the voice of Kigez. I meet the man, an old man breaks down and cries. Please, can you try to find me? Is my daughter dead or alive? I said, I have no idea. She cut off the phone. Whether she committed suicide, whether she's alive, nobody can tell until today. That thing ended like that. Later I met the father. Have you heard about your daughter? Up to now, I've never had my daughter. Who know what ended in her life? Did she... I suspect she could have committed suicide. Maybe she's alive. But if she's alive, where is she living? What is going on in her life? So that is one of the challenge when you have an unruly spirit to the young men and they never sit to be well taught and to be well displayed. Whereas you come and meet a person that sits under guidance, mentorship, correction, discipline, you see them going forward and going forward. Then their life become better and their marriage become effective and a happy marriage and an lasting marriage. So sometimes because of unruly spirit, you eat the fruit of rebellion. And the Bible says the spirit of rebellion is the same as witchcraft.
every time I talk, uh, my son there, Willie, is busy capturing everything. One day she left, he left this church. He met me in the, in the radio there and says, please, that I want to go. I said, first wait, let me pray about this. Let me hear also what the Lord is. Says, I send him to pray. It's true, you can ask Wilbur. Hello, Wilbur. Go and pray. I'm also going to pray. Then you'll come back at me. I tried to hear sensitive. I said, you know, Wilbur, matters of destiny from what I've come to know are very deep things. You know, live alone this physical life. But the spiritual things, our spiritual destinies are not governed by the things we know and the things we see here or the families we come from. And that's why it's very important to be very sensitive to navigate, to really know the path the Holy Ghost is working in us. So I tell him, first wait, because the enemy will want to hit you off from your destiny. In less than two weeks, Wilbur come back to me and says, Papa, I prayed. Uh -huh. And God confirmed, please, I have to go. I said, okay, and went to... There is no problem with another church. You get the point. Other churches are also okay, just like lift up Jesus, okay. But where is God leading you? Where, which is the place that God has prepared to become your spiritual family? Let me tell you about that. Even physically, you are not born in the ten families, are you? So why do you think the spiritual family for it, you can jump here and there? If you find a person who never respects the family codes and family lifestyle, do you think that person is going to do very well? Definitely no. The same thing is uh, the spiritual family. There is where God has caused you to be born, to be birthed, where your line is. And that's very important. And so he says, I'm going to solo in a church. He said, okay. So he says, Papa, pray for me. I feel I must go. I can't stay another Sunday. Lord God, he has said that you have led him, guided him. If you are the one, I cannot stand on the way to stop you, Lord. So I release him and I bless him. Let him go. And he went. Then after some time, I start to see the skin change. The man is looking pale. No glory, looking. Still fully coming once in a while behind there. And he says, Papa, I'm going through a bad situation. You know what happened? He's there. He reached the place. Every door in this life shut for that young man. He could not get a job. He could not get what to survive. Do you know what I'm talking about? When, even when we're supposed to give you a job for 10,000, cannot give it to you. That's where he reached. Yes. Okay. Okay. Come, come here. Mm. <laughs> Even me, Papa, I thought that, uh, why have I kept my life in one church? Why don't I visit other churches? Then uh, it is two weeks back, I decided to go in that church. But when they started praising and worshiping, my spirit told me you are in a wrong place. I came running. And that was the best. <laughs> then I, I tuned on my hope, I tuned Hope Radio. I had when he had started worshiping the Lord. It was not until I reached here. Then I realized I'm in a safe place. <laughs> my spirit cannot go in a wrong place. Thank you, Papa. Thank you so much. That's true. That praise God. And of course, he's not the only one. We could go on and many people will tell you some of those experiences. It's until you have walked that that you can understand. So now, Wilbur, he does not only suffer problem at that time of lack of provision. Do you know scarcity, which is a, a judgment? Eh? There is scarcity because things are hard. Eh? The economy is hard. Hmm? But a scarcity which comes when heaven is judging you, it's a different story. Even if somebody is supposed to give you the job, he can't give you. Because God blocks every side so that you are in a corner to come back at your senses and repent. Repentance means a change of mind. I was wrong. I come out from the wrong way. 
I go back to the right. You get it? That's what repentance is all about. A change of mind. You change your mind completely. You abandon what was wrong. So, he falls sick. He starts to fall sick completely. Sick unto death. You know, sometimes he would be picked here when the man was, they are carrying him. When he would fall down, that young man, you see. Now he stands on that thing. I've never seen him collapsing. You ask, <laughs> you ask Nicholas and Jacob, they would carry a dead boy out of the church. The devil is a liar. We were going to lose the man playfully like this. Because another time, uh, such a thing could come and he would never re recover. Thank God. So sometimes they would, they would call me, pray for him, come back. At that time, I think, Tash, Tash, you were there that time? Huh? So come and tell us what happened. <laughs> now, he was falling sick, eh? and to death, leave alone a sickness which you can recover. But a, a sickness and what? And to death. He reached that place of a sickness and to death. Listen, until, of course, remember, he's not having food to eat. There's a time when I had to help him, give him something to eat, because I gave him 50,000. I realized what is going on. I am giving him just to survive, to capture at least life. Now, the he could not pay the rent. Now he started falling sick to die from the house until the man says, hey, one day this young man will die in my house. They will say I killed him or what? Get out of my place. I want you to die from here. Can you imagine? Life left right rejected him. Everything became hard. Can you imagine when the people renting you where they don't want you to stay because you can die in the night. Where will they take your body? Who are you? Who will they contact when you have died in their house? So the man says, ah, ah, don't bring me trouble. Find another place. You are going to die in my house and bring me trouble. Go and hire somewhere else. Not hiring my house. Can you imagine? You have not reached that place. But thank God, when all that happened, he came back and says, Papa, I think why I'm suffering, eh? I have walked in rebellion. I'm tired with that life. Just accept me. I confess. Give me a chance. Call me at Lift Up Jesus Church on a Sunday. And I will come and I will pray. Those of you remember him crying here like a baby? From that time, that is the life you see. He went back. <laughs> now he won again. So that's very important. Yes. Praise the Lord. I remember that day, it was actually, that guy was really living a very bad life. He was so sick. I remember that day, it was even Holy Communion, but they brought him here lifeless. And that day he couldn't even open his mouth to take the Holy Communion. Even if they tried how, like, like to, for him to open the mouth, he couldn't. Trust me, would look at him and know that this guy is just left with minutes to die. But daddy prayed for him. And uh, we left him here in the evening. The services got done. And everyone went home. So... There was mommy's car and she had to first go home, so she told Jacob to come and pick him and take him to Makanga Hospital. It was really so bad, like he was really so bad. So when Jacob came back, it was me and Nicholas and him, we were like, this can't just happen. This guy has really served God in the media, but this can't just happen. And we started praying. We prayed and prayed and prayed. We exercised our faith. And by the time we left here, trust me, the guy was walking on his own. Again, the Jesus guy was able praise. to talk. But by the time they brought him here, he was just lifeless. But glory to God, that time we believed God and prayed with him. 
and he left here walking on his own. That day he didn't even go to the hospital. Give Jesus a clap of praise. You see, when we open what we call doorways, hmm? doorways are entrance of evil spirit into your life. Doorways entrance gates for the evil one to come, either afflict you or bring any catastrophe or calamity on your life. But those doorways, sometimes you are the ones who open them. For example, if you willfully act in foreign sin, willfully, and especially people who know the truth, that's dangerous. When you know the truth and you stubbornly go against it, you, you, you create a doorway. It is different when you fall in mistake by ignorance. Even when you fall by ignorance, still a door is open, but God judges you differently. A person has a stubborn heart and hardness of heart, which actually God is against more than a sin. You see, Jesus said to these people, they came, is it lawful for any man to divorce his, his wife? He says, no, in the beginning it was not like that. But because of the hardness of their hearts, Moses allowed them to divorce. So because a, a hardness of heart is a rebellious heart. Now that's what the Bible says in the book of, of Romans. God gives you up to a best mind. Even God reaches a place and give up on you. What can God do when your heart becomes so stubborn that you, you rage against every counsel? then God will give you up to the best for any mind. And the Bible says, at that mind when God gives you up, you lose a sense of conviction. The Bible says your mind gets seared up as with an iron. So you are seared up, no further conviction whatsoever. Even if you bring an angel and he stand and speak, you don't listen. There are people who have come to that place that if an angel came, from heaven, they would still not listen. Now, you remember the story of the, of the rich man when he died? And uh, he went and found himself in hell. He says, Father Abraham, please kindly help me. At least allow me to go down. And I talk to my brothers that they don't have to come into this place of torment. And what did he say? He says, God has left his own prophets there. And he says, even if they were to see a man from the dead, they would not listen. Even if a man died and people saw him and he was buried. Are you hearing me? Even if a man died and I buried him and he raises after a year, people will still not believe. I'm telling you. I keep telling a young man, Rogers, he died and I rose him. I can't believe that Rogers, those of you who were here saw Rogers, who was buried under the sun, then I know that pe people can enter hardness of heart. No. Rogers would never backslide, even if you did what? But he backslid. Don't think they got him down here like he will. No, under the sun, seven feet like this. Buried for more than 40 minutes. When we had all given up, I reported the death of that man to the police myself. He came to this church, got saved, the parents came here, we did Thanksgiving, the whole family got saved. But after a few months, I don't think he stood for a year. He went back to a life of the flesh. How is that possible? Because a man can harden his heart against counsel and against correction. That's a dangerous place. That's what the Bible says, in the multitude of counselors there is safety. But where there is no counsel, plans go awry. They go wrong. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
So, it's very important. Let me just summarize my scripture and I release us for the word that we have received. Matthew 26. Some of you who are feeling scared, my intention for these things is not to bring terror to your hearts. But if that terror produces repentance, then it is a godly sorrow, and still we have achieved the purpose for the ministry today. God bless you. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gathers Men and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. Sit here while I go and I do what? Because Jesus knows I can only navigate through in this time of distress by giving myself to the time of prayer. You must come to a place in life where you know when everything is working against you, prayer is the antidote. Are you hearing me? Prayer can only become the antidote to help you in the most critical moment of trial and affliction or distress. There is always what I call a darker hour of the soul. A darker hour of the soul is the most intimidating moment of one's life. Where the kingdom of darkness, the powers of darkness will come full blast and full swing as if this marks the end. In that moment, normally you feel this could be the last moment of your life. When the oppression is so intense on your soul, where the affliction brings so much anguish to your human spirit that you feel almost giving up the path of life. Men who have very weak spirit is a very dangerous moment. Others definitely give up and they accept, they die. And you hear somebody gave up of their faith, they died as quick and everybody's shocked that they died. Now what happened, the man has lost the path of faith in that moment. And that's why we are encouraged not to give up our faith in the most trying moment. In the COVID time, one of the women of God is a pastor in this city, my friend. After we lost Bishop Bakasava, the spirit that weakened me, and I said, oh my God, we might lose another one. I'm the one who called her, we're taking a walk with my wife. I took an hour praying for her. And when I called her, she told me, Apostle, I cannot hold on anymore. I can't hold on longer than this. I can't even breathe. And she could not even lift the head. And she could not even lift the hand. And she was brought to this place. I felt so, that was the morning. One is there, dead there. Even the body has not been transferred from Kampala. I feel the cloud of darkness. What's going to happen to the church? My local church in Kabale. Now that I, I owned the whole terror. I owned the, I felt moved. And she was talking from very far. I prayed. I said, I'm not letting you to die. I said, no, you've got to hold on to your faith. Don't give up. We prayed. I prayed in the tongues. I prayed all kinds of prayer, rebuking death for more than an hour, battling and wrestling for her soul between death and life. And you feel like her, her little life is hanging on a thread like this. And I could feel it. Of course, when the news came about the death of another great man, she felt now. For her, she was even more sick than him. So I said, you have got to hold on. You've got to hold on. We are not giving up for your soul. And we held on. So I started calling, fading out. Then later she says, do you know how God used you? If that day you didn't call me, I don't think I had more life to live. 
And of course, there was another girl, another lady. She's my daughter. She's in Anglican church, but she has a relationship with me spiritually. She also called me during that same week. And I also battled. And I could feel her, even life, even breath is hard, even on the phone. You could feel her struggling to breathe, to talk a few words to me. And we had to wrestle. My friend, I'm just talking about the battle of faith. To fight in the spirit. It is, it is, the faith is a powerful force that a little giving up on your faith, it doesn't matter how strong you have been. And what the devil does to bring your faith to that place to fail. But you see, if you fail your faith, you lose everything. It's by faith that we live. It's by faith that you can have victory. It's by faith that you can stand against the wells of darkness. The Bible said what? Faith is a shield that will extinguish the fiery arrows from the evil one. It extinguishes fiery darts from the enemy. So the devil will shoot arrows of death, arrows of fear. You know fear is a deadly spirit. And I've always said fear and faith are opposite each other. When fear comes through this door, faith must go the other door. When you have fear and faith comes in, fear must go. So the two never live together. But that's how powerful faith is. So when you lose faith, you lose the battle of life. And I encourage you, that's why your faith is not something you're going to play games with. And if there is any challenge to build, you must build your faith. By the way, remember I said even to the dimension of increased level of glory, the first level, the first dimension is faith. Faith is the builder, is the foundation for all your spiritual life, your spiritual existence. The just shall live by their faith. The righteous shall live by faith. We are saved by faith. By grace through faith we are saved. So without faith you can't stand. Without faith you are gone. So you must guard against your faith. Jealously keep your faith. And guard against the faith. The day your faith fails, that day you lose the battle. Doesn't matter how strong if effectively you stood. But the day you give up faith, you lose the battle. And that's why I keep teaching you these things. So now Jesus is confronted with the most trying moment of his of life. We are talking about when the soul of Jesus has come between life and death. We are not talking about ordinary times of challenges, praying for ministry, praying to have anointing to perform miracles. That's different. That's a different level of faith where you are believing God for walking in great anointing and miracles, serving God with the saints following. But it's also a different dimension of faith when you are contending for life. And when all the kingdom of darkness is raging, it crush the little thread of life that is hanging on. You get? So now Jesus in that place is fighting for life. So I sit here, I go and pray. Because when you are praying, you are invoking God into your situation. You are hearing me properly. I said, when you pray, you are doing what? You are invoking God. You are bringing God into your situation, into your circumstances. You are bringing the mastery of God's grace. You are bringing the rulership, the control of heaven into your situation. You are praying not just to pray for prayer and passing hours. You are making God intervene beyond your human capacity. That's the power of prayer. You invoke his presence, you invoke his hand, you invoke his spirit, his interventions. And when God comes to take mastery and rulership and have charge and full control, definitely the battle will shift. Now the battle will shift. Now God will give relief. Heaven will intervene. Heaven will send you help. Heaven will send you relief. Heaven will intervene for your situation. Go to the next verse. And he took with him Peter and the two sons who were James and John. You know that? The other sons of Zebedee, James and John. And they began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Now, they began to be sorrowful. There is a sorrow that leads to repentance. But there is a sorrow that brings to, to crushing of the spirit. Those are two different sorrows. Amen? A godly sorrow helps you to change your ways. 
but a satanic sorrow leaves your spirit crushed and empty and hopeless and frustrated and in great despair. That opens the door of satanic harassment on your life. It's not a sorrow that leads to repentance. It's a sorrow that gives the devil loophole. It is a sorrow out of fear. It's a sorrow that brings distress and agony, terror, where you are crushed beyond the hope. So they became sorrowful and heavy. The spirit of heaviness is where faith is all gone and you are full of carnality and you can't pray. The flesh has taken over. Are you under it? So in the spirit of heaviness, you can't pray. When a spirit of heaviness comes, you can't praise. When a spirit of heaviness comes, you can't even read the word. You, even if they give you a Bible, you can read and you don't feel any, any urge to read or any urge to understand what you are reading. Are you understanding? You get a Bible and it's not making sense for you. You want to read, but there is nothing left in your spirit. It's bad. Men reach that place. It's a very bad place of depression. I understood that one day my daughter Esther went through depression. I could not believe this is my Esther, my child that I cherished and I know. I couldn't believe this. Because the, she was totally emptied of anything of God. I couldn't believe that she could ever reach that place. Now there was no left any connection to spiritual things. Now we were losing the battle. I had to get her from Kampala, the school where she was. I said, Esther, we love you when you are alive. Your life is better than education. With no education, don't get worried about education. Your life to us is better. It's precious and special. When I realized she's like this, and what I, I, I was only left with because I inspired her to speak French, because she was losing interest for everything in life. Depression is the worst enemy. You know, you can see this light and it does not look like this. Are you understanding? You can be in a noisy place, people are talking, you don't even hear what they are talking. It's a bad place. I said, Esther, Let's go talking French, but I just want to give her a little exercise to walk. Let's go to talk French. She was not yet good in French that she's in France today because of her French, which she loved too much. And I only reminded the only friend in her life, she could not believe in anybody anymore. And that's when I was so intimidated because even in mama, she could not believe all her sisters, she could not believe. Nobody spoke into her life. And God only left a little space for me to navigate with her through the most dark hour of her soul. So let's go speak French, Esther. Hold her little hand. Try to speak French. And at that time, my French was even better than hers. Today, she has better French than me. So I was struggling to persuade her, but I know what I'm after. Then when we come back, sit down at the table. And the Lord give me wisdom. Take her through the book of through some scriptures in the book of Psalms. Reading like you are starting a little baby in P1 to read one scripture by scripture. My intention is to get a word in her spirit. Repeat it. Read yourself, Esther. Read this word. Read this chapter. You know, to build it just from zero level. The devil is a lie. When her whole soul was totally emptied, filled with only darkness and no ray of little light or hope at all, it's a bad state. When you see people giving up of life, they come to that place. Depression is the worst enemy, the worst terrible situation that you never want you or any of your loved one to experience. Many people, when they reach that place, they give up. Now, Jesus knows that the antidote to a severe depressed mind is prayer. By the way, the only medicine you have for stress is prayer and praying in the spirit. I repeat that point. The only medicine you have to cure stress is not a medicine from doctor. 
This man is a doctor. There is no doctor anywhere on earth that can give you a treatment for stress. And stress in its acute dimensions, it leads to a depressed spirit. A, deep, a depressed spirit is a crushed spirit when all faith and hope is gone. It can't stand. There you are only reminding me one thing, death or becoming mentally broken down or becoming crazy. And some people, if they have not died, they break down mentally, they lose any normal remembrance or any normal ability to think in the normal way. It's a bad story. It's a bad situation. But the good thing, much as it is intense, prayer is an antidote to stress levels. If you ever feel your levels of stress are going so high, I'm here to tell you that prayer will help you. Are you hearing me? And it's the only medicine, and I tell you the truth. Some of you will want to go to a doctor. Doctor is not going to cure stress. That is beyond. They can only give you seductive drugs which will cause you to sleep and which will leave your mind even more badly affected. You are joking. They will only give you power more drugs to make money at the expense of your own life. The effect of those seductives are even more worse than the stress you are trying to chew. They will leave you, you will get time, it will take time to get out of the effect of those very tough set. They just bring, give you those medicines to just give you to sleep, but they knock you down, leave very, very bad side effects upon you. But you don't need to wait to that place. That's why if you start building a discipline on prayer, you will find that you are able to put a blockage that your stress levels will not go beyond a certain dimension where the Holy Ghost will be able to take control and God save you before you fall and sink into that dimension of a high level of depression. Go to the next verse. I'll just give myself like two, three minutes and I close this. Just okay? Then says he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. You see, I know some of you might have never experienced life between death and life. You've not come to this. It's not easy for you to internalize. Jesus is saying, Please come and stand with me. I have come to this deep place. My soul is exceeding sorrowful. My friend, facing death, <laughs> coming face to face with the demon of death, with the spirit of death, is the most terrifying moment for you. Because it harasses and torments the mind. Why it's bad? Because it goes so deep in your mind, in your, in, in your mind, that you feel like you can't live again. Tarry here and watch with me. Wait here in prayer and watch with me. The word tarry in this place is waiting while praying. And watching is another word for prayer where you are praying strategically, taking concern of the targets and the attacks of the enemy. You watch against the enemy. So pray and watch. So watch is a word of prayer which brings up to about the, the intensity of us of a spiritual, it's a spiritual way kind of prayer. It's a spiritual warfare kind of prayer. When you are watching, you, you are watching because the enemy can come against you from any direction. Like when Nehemiah was building and they have spears on hand, one hand building, because the enemy can come from that direction anytime. So you watch because the enemy is trying to come and attack. Okay, go to another scripture.
going a little ahead, he fell on his face and prayed. He fell, prostrated himself on his face. Now, those are different. Another time, given opportunity, we can talk about the different uh, significance of different prayer gestures. He prostrated on his face, fell down. Now you can pray, that is one gesture when you are praying on your face. That means a place of complete surrender. I remember when that Roger died, nobody told me to prostrate in my bedroom. I just went, I found myself prostrating before the face, on my face before the Lord. It's a place of total surrender. You come to the end of yourself. But there is sometimes when you can pray on the back. That's also different significant meaning. But sometimes bowing on the knees, that's different kind of prayer. But sometimes you can pray pacing around. We love to do that, especially praying in tongues, pacing around. I've seen sometimes most people pray here. We pray and people are pacing. It's, it's another way of prayer. But all those prayer gestures, we can define them. What is the more, what is the significance of these gestures in our prayer? Sometimes we lift up hands, holy hands to the Lord. What does that imply? All those different means. But in this case, Jesus fell on prostrated. When you prostrate, you have surrendered. You have come to the end of yourself. Only God can help you. That place. And prayed saying, Oh my father, if it is impossible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as well, your will be done. He surrendered his will to the will of God. I can't handle. I remember when that they told me that Rogers died prostrated in the bedroom I said Lord this is too much I can't handle I remember telling God it's too much I can't handle I remember throwing the keys rather my phone on the bed even forgetting about it I drove to the police myself I don't even know how I drove to reach there I can't remember but somehow I reached there you know you are driving but like your mind is not really here and my prayer was, Lord, roll away this reproach. It's too much. Take away this shame. Roll away. I prayed only two words. Take away this shame and roll this reproach away from me. And I said, Lord, all the ministry you gave me of miracles has slipped out of my hands. For the first time I felt as emptied as I was born. I'd lost it all. I needed strength from God and he had me so Jesus came to this place go to the next verse go to the next and he comes into the disciples and find them asleep and says to Peter what could you not watch with me even one hour could you not at least watch with me one hour we always teach on this and encourage people at least one hour should be the maximum kind of a discipline you make prayer. Create it your eye. Because Jesus is saying, can't you at least in 24 hours have one hour to concentrate on prayer? Just one hour. What? Jesus was amazed that even you can't afford to pray for an hour. Are you hearing? The minimum of your prayer discipline should at least at least not be less than an hour make one hour at least your minimum discipline you can pray more but at least don't pray less than an hour at least out of 24 hours create it on yourself you know you have nothing to lose when you pray out of 24 hours you pick one hour to always tarry with God 
but you have so much to lose in your life by just failing to give God an hour talking with him. The proprietor, the owner, the, the, the leader of your life. <laughs> you can't have time, even an hour, of building and engaging with him. So Jesus is amazed that they can't pray for an hour. I may be here talking with some people that it is hard to make an hour of prayer in their lives. You may be here, but it is hard for you to pray for an hour. That is very dangerous. It's wrong. Definitely. What do you expect God to do for you? Will you at the end of the journey of your life come and say, God, you didn't give this to me in life. You never did this. You never used me. You never helped me. Just because you have been very negligent to the most crucial and greatest discipline of your life. I have watched Christians and especially ministers' disciplines. They will be available for other things. They will, be, they will give every man time. But the only lonely man is the Lord whom they have no time for. How easy it is to spend time in fellowships, in conversations of people who don't help and add value to your life. And how, how difficult it becomes for you to find time to God. The only one that can help you. The only one who, can, who owns your life. The only one who determines your future. The only one who knows that destiny and the plan he made for you. The devil is a liar. Can you imagine that you live half of your life outside God's will and outside God's purpose for your creation? Think about that. God gives you 80 years or 100 years, but half of your lifetime is lived far away and totally in a different space, not according to God's will and not according to God's plan because you don't know. It's only until you begin to pray God's will, God's plan for your life, that your life gets realigned back into God's purpose for which he designed and created you. I am convinced that there is coming a day that will bring a lot of disappointment and that time might be too late for you. When you appear before the throne of God and you discover you, you squandered all your time into useless and unrewarding engagements. There is a day when you can't reverse the clock of your life. Maybe today the Lord is speaking to you to readjust on your schedules and plans how you spend your 24 hours per day. Will you give God at least a tenth of that time? At least a minimum hour always. That minimum, a minimum, that means you can pray for four hours. That means you can pray for three hours. That means you can pray for more than that. But at least don't fail to create an hour with God in the place of prayer. Okay. You could not watch with me one hour. Go to the next verse. And remember, this is the th he, three times Jesus came and found them sleeping. And still three times, he challenged them on that same thing, why they can't pray for an hour. Every time he gave them another space, at least an hour, he still came back, even another hour, they still slept. They still didn't pray. And came back again the third time, after a space of an hour, and they still stay alert, be in prayer, so you don't m m wander into temptation without ever knowing you are in danger. Stay alert, be in prayer, so that you don't fall into temptation. There is part of you that is eager, ready for anything in God. But there is another part that is as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. Give me the other transition. I love that one, but let's go to the other one, where I said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. I want to end on that uh, part. I enter into temptation that the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is 
I will end that to build my coming message in the second service about, you know, uh, the place of building capacity in your spirit, in yielding to the Holy Spirit. And we're going to now go to another interesting part on how the spirit in prayer will help you to build the capacity to conquer the weakness and the, uh, the limits, the, the, the limitation of, weak, of the flesh. So we have seen the most important thing. We are talking about prayer breaking limits. And so here we see that the, f the flesh is, the spirit is willing. Your spirit is willing. Even as I'm talking, I can read on your faces the eager, the desire to get deeper in God. That's where the other in, uh, translation also was bringing out something. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now get back to that other in translation you had given. So there is a part in you that is, that is the part of the spirit in you, which is enticed and seduced by spiritual things, which desires earnestly God, things of God, anointing, supernatural, intimacy with God, the fullness, the glory of God, operating in revelations, operating in faith, walking in the power of God and winning and having victories. And there is another part that is pulling you back so that you never experience that. Stay alert, be in prayer so you don't wander into temptation without ever knowing you are in danger. You see, when you don't pray, you fall in danger without knowing that you are. The danger is surrounding you because your spiritual eyes are not unveiled to see in the realm of the spirit, to see in the spirit world. So for you, you think everything is safe. Everything is okay for you when things are actually very dangerous. When the devils have surrounded you and encompassed you to totally ruin and destroy you, you do not realize that danger has struck on your life. But it will soon manifest, by the way. Don't think it will stay like that. Don't think you will only be encompassed by evil powers and evil spirits. A moment comes when you get entrapped up into, uh, the, 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 into the camps of the wicked, into the camp of the enemy. By the time you discover sickness has taken part of you, by the time you discover calamity has come, today a man of God called me and I said, you know what, that is an attack. I said, young yeah, man, because he's trying to campaign for a position at a regional level, I said, my dear, you don't know what you're talking about. Because they just called me. We were supposed to go with him on a mission uh, at, at Rubuguri, at our church. And then now, last night, they called him. The child is in an international school in Kampala. And they just called him, please, your child is between death and life. So he left his place around the three there, driving to Kampala. The child suddenly is vomiting. The, the school is well versed with the doctor. It's an international school. They take the child, the girl. Everything is negative, but the child life is going. I said, that is the devil. He's sending an assault. That is an attack. I said, that is an attack. And I said, two things. That is a demonic attack. Then I said, number two, that child of yours watch over her. That has a greater destiny. Then I told a story of Esther. I said, Esther grew different from other children. And the devil knows somebody with a spiritual destiny and he wants to attack that child before he's launched to that level. So I said, that girl is very special for you. I said, drive properly, reach safely, don't drive crazy. And the devil makes you fall into the temptation of crashing into accident. He said, actually, yesterday, my car, the, the tire burst. I have never experienced this. It's a great car. It's a brand new car, Prado car, very strong. And on the highway, boom. But the Lord kept them on the road. I said, those are launched attacks of the enemy. Why? Because now you are contending for another spiritual position. You are contending to become a regional overseer. You cannot serve like a pastor of a local church. Those are different battles. Those are different spaces you have to come and start fighting. I told the other time, I get to know when I started finding myself confronting with global powers, demonic powers, fighting with foreigners, where am I? In another space. Praise God. Last night I told Pastor Matthias, I said, Pastor Matthias, you have been in meetings of the NAFBAC. 
I sit as a, a, a national elder at a national level in the Council of 24 Elders on Uganda. I oversee all the entire region, Kigez region, for all the, as an elder still. I've been solving conflicts of churches, not lift up Jesus Church, conflicts of other ministries. I told Pastor Mas, to reach that level, you have been seeing there. I have to carry a certain dimension of authority for the other bishops to hear me, for me to speak into their face with kingdom authority, to operate at that level. My faith must be tried through, you get. Otherwise, authority does not simply come because you ate a lot of money. Stand up on your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Of course, when we start touching these dimensions of prayer, uh, things go deeper and go sweeter. Praise God. Just because, you know, this is the reality. We have been in this, a, a training. We have been in the school of ministry. Amen. And, uh, and, and, and you must know that. Because some of you, while God is speaking such a messages, you are definitely going to be built up. You are going to be uh, strengthened. You are going to be tried. You are going to step in places where God will either trust you with the leadership positions, either in the church or either in the secular uh, organizations or maybe certain NGOs or maybe certain projects that will challenge you to stand where other people can't stand. This is not a Sunday school stuff. This is, this is born for the mature. Praise God. Are you hearing me? It's born for the who? This is a nap, this, these are not nappies for infants. Babies whom you tie nappies around. Eh? No. This is a food for the mature. People who can now deal with the powers in the heavenly places. People who can revert attacks when they come to ruin your whole soul and to ruin your destiny and to ruin your future and to ruin your marriage and to ruin your ministry and to ruin your calling. Because that's what the devil wants, to ruin your studies. For you, you are a good boy and good girl at Kavale University. All you want is to study your masters and finish. But the devil does not want you to go through with your masters. So what will he do? He will launch different situations either financially, either socially, either academically, either confusion between your professors. One girl told me, I'm not graduating. I said, what happened? <laughs> I think the, uh, one of the lecturers just uh, uh, undermined me. And, and I said, why did the lecturer undermine me? He wanted to have sex with me and I refused. He promised me that if I accept, he, I, he would add marks for me. So she lost one year. And she was afraid to tell us why she's not graduating. So we had to go to Kiambogo with my wife, find out exactly what went wrong. And she had been failed miserably. So we, we sat down, talked to us. What happened? Why didn't you tell us in the first place? Says, you know, I fear to tell you because these things, Papa and Mama, it was very hard for me to share, to come and tell you that the lecturer is wooing me into sexual relationship. And I refused, I found it. He said, but you would have been open to us so that we, because we were offended. We've been supporting, giving school fees, paying tuition faithfully, millions of money, just helping her to go through. And now we are told this story. All other people are going for graduation. A week to the graduation, we have no any information. When we are also celebrating and now the situation comes. We start to smell a rat. We start to make inquiries privately. They tell us her name is not on the list for those who are going to graduate. So we say, let's go there. 
and we reached there only to be to faint. She had failed badly. So what happened? She says, to be honest to you, this is what took place between me and the lecturer. So when we called another lecturer lady who is a friend, confirmed it was a true story, and we navigated, and then she had to uh, redo another year, and God performed a miracle, and the lecturer was uh, either transferred to another university, but the following year she did very well, and then graduated. But that was the situation. She lost the whole one year. The enemy is trying to put roadblocks on your destiny. Somebody say roadblocks. Now those spiritual roadblocks are a reality. You might be here not seeing a roadblock set your way. But all devils, I can tell you, they want to put roadblocks for your progress, for your advancement. And that's why prayer, I said, is not optional. Must be mandatory for your life to succeed. In Jesus' name, lift up your hands. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and honor and we give you glory. I pray for these people and I ask that your spirit right now energize them. Your spirit energize them. Please, if you are blessed to speak in tongues, help me and help yourself for two to three minutes. Just after that prayer, I know we are time bad, but just after that prayer, I've been talking to the Holy Spirit to always make two words, three words in the spiritual language to mean one hour for you. Just take those two to three minutes. Just open your mouth louder and speak. Open your mouth louder and let utterance be given to you by the Holy Spirit. Let utterance, the, the spirit is willing, but the, the flesh is weak. Your, your spirit is willing, is eager to learn, is eager to pray, but the other part of your flesh, the other part of your body does not want you to pray. So lift your voice like a thunder desperately and pray in other tongues. Pray in the spirit or pray in other languages. If you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost, pray in in other languages in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice, lift your voice, everybody. Please just go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. Take two minutes in prayer. Take two minutes in prayer. Take two minutes and three minutes in prayer. Take two minutes praying. And if you are blessed with speaking in other tongues, just cross over into a place where you are energized, into a place where you are quickened by the Holy Ghost, into a place where you are helped by the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the Holy Spirit himself helps us in our infirmities. Likewise, the Holy Ghost helps us in our infirmities. Likewise, the Spirit himself helps us in our infirmities. We don't know how to pray for even as we ought, but the Holy Ghost himself makes intercession. Let the Holy Ghost make intercession for you right now. As we open up, the Holy Ghost is coming into your human spirit and is aiding you. He is helping you. He is quickening you. He is entering into your spirit. He is coming into your human spirit to help you. Likewise, the Spirit himself, he helps us in our our infirmities. He helps us in our fleshly weaknesses. He helps us in our emotional weaknesses. He helps us in our mental infirmities. Romans 8 and 26. The Spirit too helps us in our weaknesses. Likewise, the Spirit himself makes intercession for us even with the deeper prayer, even with the deeper intercessions, even with the deeper groanings which the mouth cannot utter. Mandelere mo shika yara raba sanda yara raba sanda yara raba raba zike tike tiko lo buzida baka tukusu raka zike tike zeko makate tike zike tiko lo buzike tike le brother zida lo brother zida zika makaradasa. Right now the Holy Ghost is praying the plan of God for you. The Holy Ghost is praying the will of God in your life. The Holy Ghost is praying the plan of God. He's praying for things you don't know. He's connecting you to the divine will and divine purpose of God. In the name of Jesus, God. Rabadeke deke 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 deke
Kandoli kati kati da 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 da. Oh ya da 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 da. Oh ya da 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 da. Oh ya da 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 da. Oh ya da 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 da. Oh ya da 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 da. If you don't know what to pray, the Holy Ghost He knows exactly what you must pray for. The Holy Ghost knows everything about your future. The Holy Ghost understands all your weaknesses. The Holy Ghost bears with your human weakness. The Holy Ghost strengthens you to pray. The Holy Ghost quickens your spirit. The Holy Ghost defies you. The Holy Ghost builds you up. The Holy Ghost comforts you. The Holy Ghost strengthens you. The Holy Ghost makes intercession right now. There is an intercession by the Holy Ghost. As you are praying in the spirit, as you are praying in another language, your spirit is praying. Your spirit is praying. In the name of Jesus, your mind is unfruitful. Your mind does not understand, but the Holy Ghost is praying for you. The spirit is praying. The spirit, your spirit is praying by the help of the Holy Ghost. Your spirit is praying by the sustenance of the Holy Ghost, by a divine energy of the Holy Ghost. He prays the mysteries. He prays the hidden things of God. Things that were hidden from your understanding. Things that are so profound and so deep. The Holy Ghost is interceding. The Holy Ghost is praying. The Holy Ghost is interceding right now. The Holy Ghost is making intercession for you. The Holy Ghost is praying for your marriage. The Holy Ghost is praying for your destiny. The Holy Ghost is praying for your calling. The Holy Ghost is praying for your ministry. The Holy Ghost is praying for your financial life. The Holy Ghost is praying for your children. The Holy Ghost is praying for your family. The Holy Ghost is praying for your future, somebody. The Holy Ghost is praying for your five years from today. The Holy Ghost is taking you to a future of your destiny. The Holy Ghost is launching you into the future. The Holy Ghost is releasing prophetic alignment of your life as you pray. You are being aligned by it your prophetic life. You are being aligned your prophetic understanding. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Please rise up. Take your te the tempo prayer higher. Take the tempo higher than that. Take the prayer tempo higher. Take your prayer tempo higher. Release, release. Don't hold back. Release, 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 release. Take the tempo higher than that. Take the tempo higher. Be energized. Be saturated with the Holy Ghost. Be strengthened in your inner mind with the might of God. In the name of Jesus, as you are praying in the Holy Ghost, you are inner man is being strengthened with the power of God. Your inner man is being strengthened. In the name of Jesus, this is a moment of victory. This is a moment of breakthrough. This is a moment of winning battles of life. This is a moment of edification. This is a moment of building your faith up. This is a moment of edifying your spirit. This is a moment of building your higher faith. In the name of Jesus, Rabazeke Telebozeka, Labazeke to Rodose, La Bade Keto Koseka, Ekarada Ziko Makaradesa. He who speaks in other tongues, he builds himself up. He who speaks in other tongues, he builds himself, he edifies himself. Right now, you are being edified. You are being strengthened in your inner man. Your spirit man is being strengthened. Your inner man is being strengthened. Your hidden man is being strengthened. You are tapping into the supernatural. You are connecting into a dimension uh, that you are crossing over. You are crossing over to a place of breakthrough. You are crossing over into a realm of breakthrough. You are crossing over into a realm of success. You are crossing over into a realm of favor. You are crossing over into a realm of supernatural. You are tapping into the supernatural realm. Uh. You are going beyond the earthly realm. Uh. You are going beyond the earthly realm. Uh. Your spirit is touring into the deeper dimensions. Uh. You are carried on the ego's wings. Uh. You are carried up on the eagle's wing. As you are praying in the Holy Ghost, you are mounting up with wings. You are mounting up into higher places. You are mounting up. As you pray, you mount up with wings of the Spirit. You are taken on a ride on the eagle's wing. You are taken up to higher zones. You are taken up to greater dimensions. Into the heights of realm of glory. Into the highest realm of the knowledge of the glory of God. Into the highest realm of 
of their supernatural power at the throne room of God where all things are possible into the realm of the miraculous. You are carried into the future. You are carried into the future right now. You are praying for your 20 years from today. You are praying for your 40 years from today. You are praying for your 50 years from today. You are navigating in a deeper dimension. You are you are breaking weariness. You are breaking fatigue and laziness of the flesh. You are being in a chase. You are flooded with the knowledge of God. You are strengthened physically and mentally and spiritually. Divine capacity. Divine capacity. Supernatural capacity. Divine ability. Supernatural potential. Divine capacity. You are tapping into the potentials of God. You are tapping into the higher realms of revelations. My God, my God, my God. What man could not do for you, the Holy Ghost is accomplishing. What the doctors could never do for you, the Holy Ghost is doing it for you. What no teacher, professor could teach you, the Holy Ghost. Ghost is teaching you what no teacher can help you. The Holy Ghost is teaching you what nobody can give you. The Holy Ghost is giving you. The Holy Ghost is equipping you. The Holy Ghost is empowering you. This is a moment of transition. This is a moment of transitioning to greater depth, to deeper realms, deeper culture, to deeper. As you go deeper, deeper revelations, deeper understanding, deeper epigraphy deeper wisdom, deeper revelation, deeper truth, deeper truth, deeper grace, deeper, 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 deeper. La kate zene mekotosa ayakateba. There is a future that is according to the will of God for you. There is a future that is in accordance to the plan of God. There is a future that is not done by man. There is a future according to the ordination of God, according to the plan of God, according to the will of God. According to the divine will of God. When God created you, before you are formed in your mother's womb, God had a plan. God had a destiny. In the name of Jesus, today we are praying for the alignment of your future. I pray for the alignment. We are praying for the alignment of your destiny. In the name of Jesus, nothing will t swallow your future. Nothing will thwart the purposes of God. As you are praying right now, you are communicating the will of God. The purposes of heaven as written on your life, as written in your book, are being fulfilled. You are being realigned. You are being connected to your destiny, to your divine will, to the heavenly plan, to the heavenly purpose, to the will of God. In the name of Jesus, as you are praying, divine strength, a quickening by the Holy Ghost, energizing, a revitalization is happening. You are being revitalized physically. You are being revitalized in your body. There is a creative power of God. There is creative anointing of God. Divine power. Right now we cross above the earthly realm to the supernatural realm, to the heavenly realm. We enter there deeper into the supernatural. We hide ourselves into the realm of glory, into higher realms of faith, into higher realms of the supernatural power. We get beyond the weaknesses of the flesh. We rise, we ascend above natural weaknesses. We ascend above natural limitations. We go higher in the knowledge of God's glory. We tap into the knowledge of God's glory. We tap into revelations. My God! We press on, we press on for mighty things, we press on for glorious advantages, we press on for our spiritual heritage, we taught our spiritual inheritance, we receive all our inheritance in God, everything according to riches and glory, we enter into 
into the riches of glory. We ascend, we ascend, ascend, ascend to the riches of his glory today. In the name of Jesus, oh my God, oh my Father, we enter the realm of limitlessness. We enter the realm of eternity. We enter the realm beyond space and time. We enter the realm of eternity in God, where all things are possible, where all things are made available, where all things are possible. And to God, all things are possible. The things that are impossible to man, they are possible with God. We go beyond man's ability. We enter into the supernatural ability. We go beyond man's life and enter the life of God. We go beyond the natural life. We tap into the supernatural life. We go beyond the earthly life into the heavenly life of God, into the miraculous zone. We cross over into the abundance of revelations in the name of Jesus. We go beyond the first heaven and the second heaven. We ascend to the third heavens, a highest dimension of the revealed glory, of the revealed glory of God in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, we possess our possessions. We possess our future. We possess our destiny. We possess our houses. We possess our vehicles. We possess our happy marriages. We possess every blessing of God. We possess our anointings. We possess every supernatural heritage. We possess destinies. Oh my God, for our children. We possess destinies for our happy marriages. We possess every resource meant for us. We refuse to wallow in the places of failure. We refuse to stop in the dungeons of pits of hell. We move higher and we ascend on the eagle's wing. We ascend by the eagle's wing to higher zones in God. We reach the throne room through the eagle's wings. We take the ride through the Holy Ghost. Mayaka, 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 mayaka. Raya selekosa, ekelekosa, osekelebosa, oliyerebosika, wakaridasika. For skillfulness, we enter divine capacities. Skillfulness, unlimited capacities, unlimited potentials, unlimited graces, unlimited abilities, adequences of God, grace, abundance, capacities and abilities in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, sweet Spirit of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, our chief intercessor. Thank you, our helper. Thank you, our teacher. Thank you, our strengthener. Thank you, our guide. Thank you, our comforter. Thank you, our reveal of mysteries. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the new purpose. Thank you for the new dimension. Thank you for the new revelations. Thank you for the new wisdom. Thank you for the new level of faith. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for the miraculous zone. Thank you for the realm of glory. Thank you for the new realm of glory you have opened today. Thank you for the new realm of the spirit you have ushered us into. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory, glory. Glory. Somebody give Jesus a perfect clap of praise. Come on, better than that. Better than that, better than that, better than that. Better than that, 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 better than that for the glory of Jesus, better than that for the glory of God, better than that to the glory of God, to the glory of the Father in the sanctuary, to the glory of God in the house, to the glory of God in the home house, to the glory of God in the heaven and on the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shate, 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 shatai mo shataya, eselebosha. Glory to God in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. And you receive by faith everything that was revealed to you in your spirit. You possess it by faith. If it's healing you possess. If it's marriage you possess. If it's anointing you possess. If it's miracles you possess. Academic excellence you possess. You possess all your possessions. I say you possess all your possessions by the faith of God. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. You possess healing for your bodies. Deliverance for your body. In the name of Jesus. Unlocking of your 
your supernatural and divine miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, I give him praise. I give him praise. I give him praise. I give him praise. Come on, give the Lord for me another clap of praise. I can tell you, if you keep doing this for four months of your life, you will access what was denied for you. Yeah. Nobody should lie you. Each one of us have received access to the riches of glory that we can tap and possess what is our inheritance. Praise God. Don't limit the faith. We will go on in one of these. We're going to learn about ascending through the prayer life into greater realms of glory. I preached on glory and I talked. One of the subjects was the relationship between prayer and glory. Prayer accesses us to higher realm of glory. Where we are going, we'll touch that. But if we continue building this, you're going to find that by the time we are done on this series, you know where how to tour into limitless eternities of the realm of glory and start touching things that have been denied you. Um, I said the other day, in a level of anointing, we break to the throne room. And they get things happen by our anointing and faith. But in the realm of glory, everything has been done by God. All we can do is to receive what God has already given us. When we are in the faith realm and in the anointing realm, we are limited by time and space. But when we enter the glory zone, the higher dimension of glory, we go beyond the law of space and time. Now, our mind normally keeps us in the natural realm where there is limitation of time, the law of time and space. And we keep thinking things will happen in the future. We shall have it in the future. We keep procrastinating. But when we enter a certain dimension of glory, we start to bring things from that realm to the natural. Quickly and speedily. Then you see breakthroughs happening quickly, changes taking place, and your capacities are happening swiftly and quickly. But we shall continue to learn on that and give God the glory to God. Give him a clap of praise. As we end this service,